Exercise, a timeless medicine for your brain. Did you know that your physical workout exercises do not just improve your muscles and the bones, but it also transforms your brain? What's good for the heart is also good for the brain. Exercise has significant benefits for your brain health. Every step you take, every mile you pedal, or every lap you swim, you are enhancing your brain health and cognitive function. Today, let's explore how being physically active boosts the brain health, which areas of the brain are involved, activated, and what happens if you overdo the exercises. There are numerous research studies across the world about holistic benefits of exercise. In a recent study, 454 older adults underwent yearly exam and their cognitive test, that is about counting, remembering, for 20 years and they agreed to donate their brains for research when they died. The participants were given accelerometers which tracked their movement and physical activity. Result, those who moved more scored better on memory and thinking tests and higher physical activity were associated with 31% lower risk of dementia and even Alzheimer's disease, the research reported. And if you are consistent, you may look much younger than your age. Now, what are neuro and biological mechanisms behind the exercise benefits? Exercise boosts brain by several key processes. One. Exercise especially releases a protein called brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, which acts like a fertilizer for the neurons, promoting the growth and forming new connections. The cognition, which are mental processes involved in acquiring knowledge, understanding and interacting with the world around us also improves. And cognition also encompasses the ways we think, the ways we learn, remember and make decisions of important things in life. Number two, particularly in the area of the brain called hippocampus, exercise stimulates the birth of new neurons, new connections and also helps improve the memory function. This is called neurogenesis, new neurons being produced in the brain. Exercising can increase the thickness of your cerebral cortex and improve the integrity of your white matter. Exercise also promotes neuroplasticity, a recent hit word in medical world, uh, which is the brain's ability to form new neural connections. In other words, your ability to learn throughout your lifetime, including the old age. Number three, Improved vascular health, the health of your arteries and veins in the brain. Exercise enhances brain blood flow and also helps in formation of new blood vessels in the brain called angiogenesis, which delivers naturally more oxygen, more nutrients to the brain tissue. Number four, reduced inflammation. Exercises reduce inflammation by regular physical activity because they lower neuroinflammatory markers. Number five, mood regulation. Very important. Exercise helps reduce mild to moderate depression, anxiety, particularly through increased serotonin, dopamine and endorphin release. Other benefits? Neuroprotection, regular exercises associated with 30 to 40 percent reduced risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Physical activity blunts the cortisol response and enhances our ability to manage stress. It also releases feel-good chemicals in the body. When you, when you move, the brain releases endorphins, serotonin, dopamine. These are natural mood lifters that fight the stress and make you feel happier. That's why, you know, sometimes they tell at home, if you are bored, go out and go for a walk. 
So now number six, growth of brain cells, as I said, neurogenesis, exercise, especially aerobic, like brisk walk, running, cycling, stimulates part of the brain called hippocampus, which we just said, which is crucial for memory and learning. It actually helps grow the new brain cells. Number seven, the exercises improves focus and coordination, the area called prefrontal cortex which handles decision-making, attention, and also another area called cerebellum that controls the balance, the coordination, also become more active by exercise. That's why you often think more clearly after a workout. The number eight, better blood flow to the brain. Physical activity increases blood flow to the brain, delivering more oxygen and nutrients. This keeps your brain cells healthy and may lower the risk of even disease like Alzheimer's. What is the duration and frequency of exercises you do? Aim for 150 minutes per week of a moderate exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous activity. Spread them across three to four days a week. Some examples include, as you know, brisk walking for 30 minutes or so, cycling, dancing, hiking, running, and even jogging also helps. Higher intensity aerobic activities like jump rope, playing tennis, basketball are worth your time for the brain. Every physical activity counts. Prolonged sitting, somebody called, is called smoking. And for those who don't have time to exercise, you can do gardening. Here, varied movements of the body engage multiple muscle groups and brain regions. What about household chores? Vacuuming, mopping, floor cleaning? Yes, when done briskly for 30 minutes per day, they achieve good aerobic benefits. Nowadays, I see both spouses, husband and wife, participating in household chores and is indeed a good news, unlike the older generations. Can you overdo exercise? Can it harm? While regular exercise is great, too much can harm the brain. High stress, which really is cortisol, and that would make you feel anxious and even moody or even depressed at times. Sleep problems? Excessive exercise can disrupt sleep, fatigue and brain fog. You may lose focus, you may feel forgetful or you may struggle to concentrate. Immune effects. Chronic overtraining can weaken immune system, making you more likely to get sick. So over exercise is no good due to all these reasons. The evidence is compelling. Exercise is not just medicine for the body, but powerful therapy for the brain. Of course, like any good thing, you know balance is the key. Listen to your body, rest when needed, and enjoy the mental benefits of moving every day. Take care. Bye.